Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas. We're here today with the all-new Ruffian ES150G. Uh, so ESOP just came out with this new engine drive generator slash welder and uh, pretty awesome little unit. So uh, in previous videos we did one with a setup. Um, in this video we're going to go over options and just details about this unit. What comes with, what it doesn't come with, and just the standard functionality of it. And then we're going to try and we're going to get it out and we're going to fire it up and weld with it and we're going to try and plug in a couple of pieces of equipment to it from ESOP uh, to see if we can run those as well. So first things first, we'll jump into it. So in our setup video, it comes on a pallet. Um, it does not have the axle and wheels installed nor the handle or the feet, but not a big deal. It didn't take very long to do. Uh, I do recommend two people helping you though, or just two guys doing it. Uh, we had to put oil in it because it didn't come with oil, but that's not a big deal. We added oil and then we put gas in the unit. But very nice, it's a Kohler Command Pro 14 horse engine powering the generator and then it's an inverter technology and it does the split power. So we have generator power and we have weld arrow output power on the left and right side. Um, Pretty light, 248 pounds with the axle and wheels, uh, not including the gas, but it's it's actually very manageable. Um, but two people are recommended to lift this unit. So it's 150 amp output. Um, on the plug side of things, we walk around here. I'll show you on the. So we have a 20 amp breaker for that pot that runs the uh, generator output. We have 120 volt, two 20 amp plugs. Uh, with GFCIs on them, and then we have one 240 volt 20 amp. But this is a three prong plug, so any piece of ESOP equipment that's 220 will plug into this unit. Um, pretty nice, everything's all closed up, IP23 rating, so uh, fairly weather resistant. It's got a nice little tray here, and then on this side we have our welding output. So it did not come with a stinger or ground, but we had a couple. Uh, from previous videos, so we plugged them in, but we got positive and negative terminal. When you fire the generator up, you got to turn on the welding output, and then it lights up, and then you can adjust your amperage and your arc force from there. Uh, 50 millimeter DENS connection, uh, very nice, pretty robust. Um, it's it's fairly nice shaped. You, I mean, I, I like it, I, and it's it's pretty light for what it is. Price point is there. Um, very nice unit. So just a couple more options. We got a five gallon gas tank, fuel gauge, and then walking over to this side, we have our Kohler, so it's a pull start. We have our kill switch here, choke here, air filter, and then our fuel shutoff is underneath the tank right there. Um, and then if you notice in the back here, there's an hour meter. So Kohler recommends after the first five hours of runtime change oil and then every every 50 hours after that, but it's good to keep track of your hours. So there's an hour meter tucked underneath there out of the weather. We have amperage ratings on the sticker on the inside here, uh, giving you just output for stick welding and generator power. So this thing is a 4,000 watt continuous 4,500 peak uh, generator power. So you can run some uh, pretty decent sized tools. So if we were to plug in an ESAP 205, I think you're gonna get about half the power, but the beauty of that is you can still TIG weld aluminum in the field running the Ruffian and the 205. So uh, it should work out pretty good, but let's get this thing, uh, we'll get it fired up. So you got your kill switch, right? So just remember, I've been behind this and, and I've jerked this cord so many times before on another generator and I didn't have my kill switch turned on. So make sure that's on. You got a fuel shutoff valve, which is on the belly of the tank. When it's vertical like that, it's on. So we got fuel and we can see that in our filter. Then you got your choke. So you choke all the way to the left, his full choke. Once we pull start it, we'll slide it back over and open it up and it should take off. So um, let's give this thing a shot here.
so you can see on that di that dial we went down the 20 amps we went all the way to 150 amps so at 115 amps you got a hundred percent duty cycle uh, on the stick output uh, so if you're running a 330 second electrode with this unit at say 90 amps or so you've got more than enough duty cycle here at 100 percent and you can run a 9 amp grinder on the 110 output so you can have someone grinding while you're welding so it is a dual function machine um, it's just when you get up into the higher amperages you're starting to limit yourself on the amperage output on the generator side uh, let's uh let's give it a shot on the welding we got our ruffian outside here. We're going to set it up. We got our lead strung. We got ESOP 718 Prime in our four pound pack backpack here. Uh, we're going to give this thing a shot and uh, I'll fire it up, set the amps, and then we're going to weld with it. So just turn it here. inch electrode um, struck up nice nice clear I mean clean bead clean arc I uh, didn't notice any drops or high revs or anything really on the engine side of things but ran really good I'm uh, it's impressive uh, and you saw when I was adjusting my amperage I was also looking at the arc force just to see what it was set at but it worked out great it ran good I ran about a half electrode um, we'll run some more here and see how it keeps up So after running the rough in, we uh, stick weld with it. Stick weld's great. We're at 120 amps on eighth inch electrode. Um, we plugged the 30 plus plasma cutter into it. It did not run that. Um, just wanted to be, be aware that it won't run the plasma. When the start cartridge hit, it uh, tripped the plasma, tripped the breaker on the unit. So it uh, won't run that, but we plugged our Rebel 205 into it and we did run that. So um, we actually TIG weld aluminum with it. So it does run the Rebel 205. Uh, ran it well, and uh, but all in all, this this unit fits in the marketplace. I think for uh, farming, you know, light farm work or light construction, running uh, grinders and that sort of thing, or just welding. But it has enough to run 536 and uh, 7018 stick electrode. It's also truck mountable. Uh, you can take the wheel and the cart off there, and it'll sit on the back of the truck. So, um, man, it's a very versatile machine. It's light, um, and it does have does pack a punch on the welding output side of things. So thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for some more and uh, leave all your comments below. We'll link all the pricing below. We'll link all the accessories below for this one and uh, stay tuned for more.